Welcome to the session, Application Provisioning and Lifecycle Management using VMware and Chef. My name is Pradnesh Patil. I'm a product manager at VMware, and I focus on VMware Cloud Management Platform and configuration management tools integration, different infrastructure fabric management through VMware Cloud Management Platform. With me, I have today Matt Ray. My name is Matt Ray. I'm the director of partner integration. Uh, I help. Uh, I help Chef integrate with just about every, anything and everything else. So, so we have a jam-packed agenda for you today. First, I'm just going to do a quick overview of some of the challenges when we talk about automation, and um, then I'm going to talk about as a VMware how we are trying to tackle these challenges through our cloud management solution. The next thing we are going to get into the core of this presentation, and we are going to talk about how VMware and Chef are trying to work together to provide you the joint solution, which is more valuable. After that, we have been getting these integration requests for a couple of years by now, and the immediate response that we did was through professional services integration, and some customers have been using it already. So we have got Dan Linsley from VMware Professional Services here. He is going to show you the live demo of how exactly that integration works right now. And Active Network has been a power user of this integration. So we are going to invite Nick and Greg from Active Network on stage for some fun interview, spice up the session, ask some questions about their experience with the integration. So um, as a VMware, we work with hundreds and thousands of customers. As a product manager, every week I talk with multiple customers. And when we think about automation, the challenges in this space are constant, consistent. When we look at the agility, anybody can provision a VM very quickly nowadays. But when we are talking about three-tier application or three-tier application lifecycle management, still we don't have that agility there. Next piece, transparency. A lot of times what we see is these services are over-provisioned in our data centers. And what's the reason? The reason is organizational silos. The reason is we don't have the commitments on the service level agreements. We are not sure whether we are going to get what has been requested very quickly. Third type of problem is extension. In the particular data center, different vendors are trying to solve different, solu um, different problems by providing solutions. But the big challenge is all these solution providers, they don't talk with each other that well. <laughs> and you end up with extensibility problem. You have got one solution for your networking. You, get, you have got one solution for your infrastructure management, another solution for application management, and you have to take care of the integration, how exactly that's going to work out. Another thing what I've seen with the customers is a lot of times, as these integrations are missing, people try to write them by themselves through scripts. Sometimes they try to create processes. And again, they get faced with the organizational silos. What happens is inconsistencies between different approaches when they try to provide these integrations. And as a VMware, I'll now show you how we are trying to tackle this problem. So at the core of our VMware strategy, the core is software-defined data center. And when I say software-defined, we vision that everything in the data center should be um, modeled through the software, right? So we started with the computing virtualization, vSphere, our flagship product. We are trying to extend that virtualization into networking layer through our NSX solution. We are trying to extend it through storage, through our software-defined storage. We think of our management products as a catalyst to this software-defined data center approach. Our cloud management platform sits on top of our infrastructure and there are three main pillars to this cloud management platform. Let's think about this in terms of a uh, very easy example, three-tier application. You are trying to get a three-tier application, provision it, manage it, scale out, scale in, everything. So say if you are trying to provision a VM with networking, with storage, and some applications, the solution we have there is vRealize Automation. Uh, the previous name of the product was vCloud Automation Center. We just renamed it last year. Now, for most of our management products, we use vRealize as a brand name. So vRealize Automation is a brand name. So once the, that three-tier application is provisioned, you need to continuously monitor it. 
you need to make sure that enough resources are assigned there, whether you need to track whether the scale out is needed. And for that, we have operations product called vRealize Operations. Through this product, you can continuously monitor your resources, memory, storage, CPU, your networking, things like that. And you can get quick alerts, dashboards, reports, things like that. Third pillar of this cloud management platform is vRealize Business. All this automation operations is great, but I want to figure out how much exactly this app provisioning is costing me right now. If I do this from, say, if I move this from vCenter to AWS, how much this is going to cost me? And that showback, chargeback kind of functionality we provide through vRealize Business. So that's our cloud management platform. So now I'm going to dig a little bit deeper into the automation piece of it. Because with Chef, when we are working on the integration, we are starting with the automation piece. So I want to quickly overview that piece. So again, going back to the three-tier application, you need underlying resources. You need VMs. You need network with that VMs. You need security. And in addition, on top of it, you are going to need middleware and finally application. So as a VMware, when it comes to automation, the mantra that we follow is model once, deploy anywhere. And I said it, deploy anywhere. So once the modeling is done, and I'll show you in a bit how we do that modeling, you can deploy it anywhere. You, it can be deployed on your test, dev, production environments, or it can be de deployed on your vCenter-based internal private cloud, or even on the public cloud like AWS, Microsoft, Azure. When I talk with a lot of people, yesterday I was talking with a few people at the booth, and some people have this conception that since it's a management product from VMware, it's going to work with just VMware infrastructure. Very wrong misconception. It works with vCenter, vCloud here, yes, our in-house products, but yet it also works with Hyper-V, it works with KVM, that's on the virtualization layer. On the public cloud layer, it works with AWS, Microsoft Azure, even with the OpenStack. And we are trying to expand our support with the Rackspace and other cloud vendors as well. So model once deploy anywhere sounds really great, but how am I going to define who is being able to model it? And how am I going to define? It's, not, it's anywhere, right? It's not everywhere where this should go. And that piece we take care of through reservations and policies. So each computing resource, you can define reservations, and through policies, you can create entitlements. So going back to model once, this is the screenshot from the product I have. So um, we call that model blueprint. And in our blueprint designer, you get pre-baked components. So on the left-hand side, I have different OS templates. On the right-hand side, you can get different application services. You can get uh, different software components. This is a drag-and-drop type of interface. You can drag-and-drop different components. You can define dependencies between these components. And you can say you want to have HA for your application service. You can just hit the plus sign here and specify the HA parameters, and you will get it. So that's the modeling. Once modeling is done, the next step is how do I define which type of infrastructure should be used with this model? And that part is taken care of through reservations. So for your dev environment, you want to use, say, cheap storage, and you want to use your gold tier storage for production environment. It's just a matter of creating reservations. On the other hand side, if you want to use, say, vCenter and AWS, the example I gave earlier, you can create one reservation for your vCenter type of deployments. You can create another reservation for your AWS type of deployments and tie all of that to the model, to the blueprint. So any cost profiles, any reservations, any policies, all of these things get tied to the blueprint. And through that, you can have the entire deployment. That's the vision as a VM where we are targeting. In addition, say you need more things. For example, it's a dev environment. I just request it, I manage it, I retire it. But if it's a production environment, a lot of times there are multiple approval steps. A lot of times you need to archive it that can be also modeled with this software. And once the modeling is done, we, as a VMware, we think of IT as a broker of services rather than provider of services. IT shouldn't be getting just requests and furnishing them. They should be able to have some sort of platform where they can send people 
so that these requests can be provisioned automatically. No human intervention. And for that, we have functionality called service catalog in the vRealize automation product. So all the blueprints that I showed earlier, those can be exposed as a catalog items here. So if, if it's a, say, a dev type environment you are going to furnish to a particular dev group, they can just go in here, based on their login, they will see the different catalog. It's an App Store-like experience. They hit the request button, and that particular setup will be provisioned to them. It can be also be customizable. For example, if you're trying to quickly do a backup, you can design even custom services in the software and can expose them in the self-service catalog. That's mostly about our automation solution, and maybe some of um, diehard DevOps folks there here thinking, um, I use Artifactory to move my artifacts from dev to test to UIT. I use Bamboo Jenkins for my um, continuous integration. So how exactly that maps into this solution? What, what's VMware's vision is doing there? So we have a product called vRealize Core Stream for our DevOps offering. Through this product, you can build a release pipeline. So release pipeline, your dev test, your test, UAT, production, you can model these different stages, and you can also define which engine you can use. So once we build the Chef integration, right, um, as out-of-the-box integration, you should be able to select even Chef as an engine so that the different um, stages in the release pipeline can be triggered. We also have the dashboard, so in case you design the release pipeline, hit the execute button, and something fails on that dashboard, you'll get to see the notification exactly what's failing in that release pipeline. And you don't have to worry about all these tools integration. We, we are working with all these partners. We are working with different source control repository systems. We are working with uh, different build and continuous integration tools like Bamboo Jenkins. We are working with unit test suites like JUnit Selenium to provide that integration for you so that you can practice DevOps without worrying about all that integration. And the underlying engine to vRealize core stream can be anything. If you want to use vRealize automation, great, we are happy. But if not, if you want to use something else, you want to use Chef, you want to use Vagrant, if you want to use Docker, that's also possible. You can use it in that way as well. One of the challenges when I started the presentation, I mentioned extensions, extensibility. In one data center, there are multiple tools, and you have to take care of those integrations. So as VMware, our ap approach has been, we will work with these partners, and we will build this integration. And exactly that's what we are trying to do here with Chef. So what we do is we build the integration, and we host it on our cloud management marketplace. We call it VMware Solution Exchange. If you just Google up on your computers, VMware Solution Exchange, the first link you see, you hit it, you will see different integrations hosted there. So right now we have more than almost 45, 50 plugins there, which we are working with different partners. On IPAM side, we have integration with Infoblox, BlueCat on Load Balancer, we have integration with FI, we also have integration with service systems like BMC Remedy, ServiceNow, so all of those integrations are already hosted, these integrations are, most of these integrations are available for free. You can just download it, hook it up into existing software and start using it. And that's, that's the overview of the VMware strategy and from the solution perspective what we are thinking. So maybe let's go into the deeper area of uh, VMware cloud integration and Chef integration. What's the value of the joint solution? Why should I use it? The integration we are planning, it's at the vCenter level. Even though it will work with the management product, we are planning it through vCenter Orchestrator or new name vRealize Orchestrator. So the value of the integration is if you are trying to do orchestration between Chef and different non-Chef components, that's possible. If you are trying to use our blueprint model that I showed earlier, you want to drag and drop Chef components there, that's also possible. In addition, if you want to control who is getting access to Chef through policies, you can define it in our automation platform and you will get access to that. And then the last piece, say in your organization, if everybody doesn't know about the Chef and still they want to use Chef, you want to expose those Chef services, those Chef services can be modeled in the software and they can be exposed in the self-service catalog. So anybody can come in, just hit the request button on that catalog item and the Chef services will be provisioned to them. So that's the value of the joint solution. We are working with chef folks. Matt is spearheading that. 
um, we are going to have vCenter Orchestrator or vRealize Orchestrator plugin on the Solution Exchange soon, which is going to be a collection of different VRO workflows. What we are planning is simple things. Let's start from the simple things. Installing, once the VM is provisioned, you want to install Chef Agent and register it with the server. So we are going to cover that through the workflows. Uh, pushing of different cookbooks and recipes on the nodes once they are provisioned. That, there will be another workflow which will cover that. And we will also have support for different OS configurations and different applications. So basically the um, workflow to push the different cookbooks will take care of that OS configuration or application like cycle operations for you. Once it's done, the next thing is you want to clean up, right? You want to say, the job of the deployment is done. You want to just uh, tear it down. We will have a workflow to deregister the node from the chef server and do the tear down of the machines. And this will be available as vRealize Orchestrator. And now Matt will go more deeper into the plugin features, like exactly what we are going to support and what are some of the functionality from Chef we are going to support. Yeah, so, so the goal is, is to provide uh, initial support for the, the basics of Chef, getting the Chef agent on the boxes, re nodes registered, um, applying a run list, perhaps some attributes to nodes uh, through VRO, um, and then as, uh, as those nodes, uh, you know, the environments they run in, you may assign them to the various environments, uh, perhaps even edit data bags through, uh, through VRO. Um, and this will work with, uh, of course, this will work with hosted or on-premise uh, chef, open source chef, it's the same thing. Um, and we will support Linux and you know, RHEL, Ubuntu, uh, and, and Windows. Uh, you know, this is the very, uh, native you know, workflow for, for a VRO user. You know, for a VMware user, they're used to putting together these workflows, and that's what uh, Dan's going to be uh, demonstrating. Um, and then, uh, next slide. Uh, but what we really want to do is, you know, the, the consistent message I've heard from, from Chef, uh, you know, VRO, uh, VRA uh, uh, users, is that they want they want the, the management portal, they want to have the self-service UI where, where you know, users can apply blueprints, but they don't want to hamstring their developers. They don't want them to have to go and say, hey, I got a CI pipeline, and I'm gonna go click and, and kick off some workflows, uh, and let me go check and see if it's done. They don't want developers to have to think about those sorts of things. They wanna support both, both uh, models uh, of deployment. So they want, they want the native Chef tooling. They want Chef provisioning, they want test kitchen, and they want uh, knife. And so uh, we're going to be working with uh, a, a library uh, that uh, was open sourced by the fine folks at Active Networks uh, that actually allows us to look into v VRO uh, and manipulate the, the, uh, the VRO plugins externally. And so from this Ruby library, we'll be able to say with Chef Provisioning, hey, I want you to create these, these you know, dozen nodes assign them to this blueprint, kick off that blueprint, and you know, run your chef infrastructure. And when you're done, tear it all down, and I never logged into the UI, but I still have all the benefits of managing my infrastructure with VRA. I still have the quota assignment. I still have the, the visibility into my operations and, and the full uh, audit trail of you know, who's doing what to which systems that you get with VRA. You know, so that's the goal, is to provide both workflows. Right, so this is a demo of uh, kicking off. Um, basically, we're going to show how to interact with, with using that Chef workflow library in VRO and uh, within vRealize automation. So uh, first, show you what my environment currently looks like. Currently got uh, no nodes defined here. Uh, we got you know, our org, we're all in ChefConf, and uh, a couple roles defined, a couple environments defined. And so let's go ahead and kick off a request, and I'll go into more background on it in a little bit. Nice. Awesome. Yay, live demo.
Bigger? Let's go full screen and then I'll show the plus bar. Yeah, it's resistant to such no. Oh, you're on a. He's on a VPN. Or right. VNC it into something? Yep. Go full screen at least on that. It's fine. Huh? It's fine. We can do it. Stuck. No, it's fine. Yes. Yeah, gone away. So yeah, let's do the video. Let's see where this is at. To okay, so we had our, our business group defined. I had a business group defined here, and this is actually where I ended up defining the chef org for our deployment here. So we're going to call that yeah, chef con. So there's four custom properties I'm using within VRA to to you know make this dynamic. Um, the other custom properties would be covering like the run list, uh, the environment, and uh, custom node name if you wish. Right here is where we actually define the v v VRO, the orchestrator workflows that are being called uh, at each of the particular lifecycle states of the virtual machine. In our case, we're going to take a look at machine provisioned, which occurs just, af just before, after machine's been provisioned. You know, it's been cloned, it's been customized, it's on the network. And disposing machine is where we're trying to tear down the machine. Um, it's still active, we can still access it. Um, and such. So we'll again see in both a deployment and a, a reclamation. Uh, so this blueprint is a simple clone or a link clone, and we had uh, three custom properties defined on it to be the environment, chef environment, custom node name if you wish, um, and uh, a, a run list. So we're going to prompt, actually prompt for all three of those during the request for this demo. Yep, I made the environment a drop down here of those known environments. Run list was gonna be a comma delimited list of roles in order, just as demonstration. One here, yep. We're going to do a second request. I think this one's going to end up using a, yeah, this one ended up using a custom node name. And one of the workflows a machine provision does that uh, actually registers the, the you know, node in the chef is this, this one right here, Linux VM tools chef client first run. And so it actually uses VM tools um, to copy the validator key, the ch chef, the client config, um, and the JSON first run, JSON boot, for, you know, first run JSON file onto the guest and execute the first, for the chef client for the first time.
So in the package, there are workflows in there to do both for Linux and for VMware, and for Linux, Linux and Windows um, using VM tools, and also one for um, doing it over SSH for, for Linux. So our first one kicked off here. It's uh, doing a little uh, DNS record add at first. Um, that way we can get a good you know, FQDN on our chef registration. There's the second one kicked off there. And so we got our two nodes registered there with their environments. And and run lists. So here I'm refreshing this and going to show, uh, I think we're going to kick off a delete of one of them. So the story is going to do is going to actually reach out what, what, what's kind of unique about how this particular workflow worked out is that we were um, we, we end up deleting the chef node and the chef client off of the chef server through the REST API, the chef server REST API, and we end up using the key of the client itself to to um, to do that deletion. So the so in that scenario, you wouldn't necessarily need an admin key, admin client um, to, to do any of this work. You could actually use the key of the client itself, of the note client itself. So this is demoing a different workflow out of the package um, outside of VRA, just using Orchestrator itself to tag a particular node. Uh, I was using an ad admin client as myself. We were um, applying it to the node that we had applied a custom node name to. In this case, we're adding uh, another tag to it. So when we look at this, we'll end up having two tags on this particular node. So that's the run list we defined in our request. Cleaning all those up, and after that's done, then the, the uh, all those nodes will be deleted out of Chef, both the node and the client respective client objects. So the integration we have it goes through the vCenter orchestrator, right? Uh, through the custom workflows. The beauty of it is it's customizable. You'll just download the package. You can customize it in any way you want as per your environment. Second thing is it's going to be supported. So all those integrations, you don't have to worry about support. If the new version of VRA comes up, new version of Chef comes up, we'll take care of updating the plugin as per the support. So that's the whole idea. Now I want to invite Nick and Greg from Active to share their experience with us. So if you guys can please come in, that will be great. And part of the part of the goal of having it supported by Chef and VMware is, you know, uh, Ken's done really great work, but we don't really want to have to have you engage with professional services just to get this working. <laughs> so, so uh, thanks, uh, uh, Nick and, and Gregory, for coming on stage. We had a couple questions about how uh, about the environment you guys are running at Active Networks. Um, so, uh, to start off, could you introduce yourselves? Yeah, it's Nick Chenoweth in. Uh... ThoughtWorks now, but was with Active as we were building all of these things and defining it, and uh, was championing continuous delivery and also then kind of running the infrastructure automation, um, SCM, and all the parts and pieces that might go along with that. And, Hi, I'm Gregory Zaid. I'm with uh, Active Networks currently, still, again. Um, <laughs> uh, 
been so, pretty much a plain old system, <laughs> plain old sysadmin for about 15 years and then got tossed in the deep end of the pool when we were told, hey, we're doing a forklift upgrade between data centers from Solaris to VMware, and by the way, we want to use Chef. Um, that was two years ago now, and now I'm like the unfortunate subject matter expert at work and trying to teach everyone else how to use it. And, and you said the, uh, the forklift from, from Solaris into VMware on, uh, on Linux. How, uh, if you don't mind talking about it, how large is your, is your installation? That particular application, I think it's about, I want to ballpark it at about 70 different components in terms of front end services that end users actually touch, back end services that perform uh, activities on their behalf. Mm -hmm. Um, and each one, in production at least, is a minimum of four nodes for each service. So our production environment on VMware now for that platform is about 420 virtual machines. Okay. Um, multiplied by the integration environment, QA, staging, regression, <laughs> and performance testing. Um, so you can see there was a really great desire to try and automate as much of the deployment as possible. Um, and during the... <laughs> during the process of migrating, um, I think it was you that summed it up over the course of six months of uh, trying, destroying, trying again, we came up with a count of something like nine or 10,000 virtual machines over the course of the time that we had created, tested, destroyed. <clears throat> and, and so you're using Chef uh, to automate all those systems. Um, did you do it all by hand? I mean, you're in there clicking away. Or... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, thankfully, no. Yeah. Um, the old platform had been managed by CF Engine 2, um, which if anyone here has experience with that, I am sorry. Um, it is a very capable system. It is very unforgiving. Um, okay. And uh, we basically had to start from scratch with Chef. Um, okay. Well, what, uh, what came, why did you choose uh, to use VRA? Or in your case, is it still VCAC? <laughs> I'm not sure what it's called anymore. <laughs> um, it, so that platform migration ended up going on to just a plain vSphere in infrastructure. Okay. Um, but once we got that done and the business was operating again, we were, wanted to look forward and the demand from up top was we want a private cloud because we want the flexibility, hence uh, VRA, and with it, um, VR, VRealize Orchestrator. Yeah. Greg, how's, how's your experience with the Chef PSO integration we built? Because that's what we are going to use as a core to do the out-of-box integration later. Um, admittedly, it was a bit halting at first. Uh, there were a couple stumbling blocks. I see. Uh, right now, the way that we're doing the Chef integration is through I wasn't sure if it was your library or, or someone else's, Daniel. Uh, there is actually a, a chef library for Orchestrator. Yeah. Um, that one. Yeah. That one. Mine, yeah. <laughs> he wrote it. <laughs> uh, it's one of the very nice things about it. Uh, instead of the, because before we were doing everything literally via knife vSphere bootstrap commands on the command line, uh, very fragile. Um, some of you may spice weasel. Or... <laughs> yes, that's my fault. Uh, yeah. So we started there. Um, it was too fragile for us, so looking at Orchestrator, we decided, okay, well, we really like the idea of blueprints, but we already have a, a very opinionated way of generating yeah. how we want things to be automated. So with Daniel's help, uh, we basically skeletonized the blueprint as much as we could, and then using Orchestrator, fill in the gaps. So our in-house automation takes the, our desired state shoves it into Orchestrator, which fills out the blueprint and then starts the provisioning process. Okay. Yeah, across any number of them, because Active has you know, 60 products out there, enduring products that have all different architectures, all different ways of building them, multiple tiers, single tiers. So we needed a workflow that could be used for any of those. And yeah. our automation orchestration can then just drop in and say, hey, build me 100 of these. But then tomorrow we're going to use it to build 100 of something completely else but we didn't want to have 100 different workflows to go through. Makes sense. So hence Makes we come sense. up with one reusable workflow. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Nick and Greg. Um, we now, will now take any questions that you guys might have at this point. I think we're fairly short on time, but. Yeah, I'm not sure. Any last couple of questions? Yeah. 
Uh, VMware will have, uh, they, obviously, they've got a oh, booth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I need to announce this thing. So we also have Bursa Feather session at 5.40 tonight. We have a party sponsored. I hope to see most of you there at Levi Stadium, it's sponsored by VMware. And also tomorrow we have Architect Bar at the Chef booth. So any of you have any specific questions, please feel free to stop by. Most probably I'll be there personally to answer any of you questions might have. So that's pretty much it. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> Thanks for um, showing up here and being present. Thank you.